In this video, we're going to cover one of the most powerful tools at your disposal using scripts. Now, scripts are pretty simple in essence. We are able to write some code that we don't execute that we can save and then run. Now, even though it's very simple, if you're going to write any sort of function or any type of uh, several lines of code that have any degree of complexity, it really helps if you don't have to retype everything over and over again. And you're going to want to comment it so you know what parts correspond to what. And you may want to have a situation where you repeatedly change multiple parameters and run the same analysis or same calculation over and over and over again to compare the results. So let's get started giving you a basic orientation to scripts. First thing you need to do is go to File, New File, R Script. This will open up a new window in the top left hand corner where you will actually have your script. And the console is essentially push scan. So what you can do in this new window is simply enter and type in code. So say we wanted to create an R object with the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in a vector. Now we type in this code, we could even hit enter. Notice that nothing happens essentially. All we do is we go down to the next line. No code is entered into the R console. No code is run. If we want to actually run this bit of code, we need to get the cursor on the line we want run, come over here, and click Run. Now you can see that R is actually copied and pasted, essentially, the code we wrote into the console and executed that code. And we can see evidence of this over here in the global environment where we can see that vector we created, which is numeric with the numbers of 1 through 5. Now, we're not limited to just one line of code. We could create a second line of code. Let's say we wanted a second vector called y, which corresponds to x times 6. So we have this new vector in our code. Nothing's happened yet, but we can come over here, put the cursor on the line of code we want to execute, and click Run. Now we have y, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now, one thing to know is that when you're running code, if you put the cursor on, say, the line for x, it will run the code for x, but it will not actually run the code to the next line. But it does bring the cursor down to the next line for you, so that if you wanted to run the next line of code that you have, all you have to do is click run again. We can see that we entered that code again. If you wanted to run multiple lines simultaneously, you can come over here, highlight them, and then click run. Now there is a keyboard shortcut for run. In PCs, it's Control Enter. In Macs, I believe it's Command Enter. So you can sort of save yourself some time that way. Now this is a really, really simple example. And it's not exactly really showing the true functionality of scripts in a lot of ways. Because one of the most powerful tools you have in scripts is commenting. So let's say we wanted to create a comment to explain what this is. So gives ourselves a little hashtag. Anytime R sees its hashtag or pound sign, it does not read whatever follows it on that line as code. It's simply a note that's there for the human in this whole equation. So, for example, let's say we wanted to write a note to remind ourselves what this script actually is. Create two basic vectors. Now, if we actually come over here and try and click run, R will enter that comment, but nothing really happens. And then it executes the line of code directly beneath it. Now this is a comment, but it's not really how comments shine, especially if you're new to sort of coding at all, let alone just learning R's specific syntax. It really helps to comment your code, and, and that's sort of one of the key things where you can tell good programming from bad programming is how well the code is actually commented. So one of the things that I really like about scripts is we could enter a function, say plot x and y, which will just generate a scatter plot, and we can come over here and we can type a comment. Write it in there, hit enter, and we have our lovely little scatter plot. But in 
arguments like this, sometimes it's helpful to break up each argument so that it's a lot easier to see. So if we were to come over here and hit enter inside of the argument, we can actually break up the pieces of this argument such that each one is on a different line. So here, maybe we write ourselves a note, creating a scatter plot of x and y. Another comment, enter the variable for the x axis. Enter the variable for the y axis. And then once it gets complex, maybe we want to change some of the graphical parameters on this plot. We can start to go about that. Maybe we would like our points on the plot to actually be blue. color of the points. Maybe we would like to change our actual points. Maybe we would like them to be you know, squares or some other symbol. Now this is where I really like comments because PCH is not necessarily intuitive for changing the shape of the points. So having a comment that says enter numerical code for the symbol type can be particularly helpful. Now, the other thing is that when you break up a function like this, R actually reads all of this as one line of code, such that if you were to come over here, even on the first line and click run, it'll run the entire code at once and enter it all at the same time. So now we have our new scatter plot with Y, X, and we have these lovely little blue squares. And I can come back in and say, you know what? I want to make R or x a little bit more complex, let's have x be a sequence from negative 100 all the way up to 100. And let's have y actually correspond to x raised to a power of 2. Now, come over here, I want to rerun x, rerun y, rerun my plot. And then, all right, I have this awesome new graph here. But you know what? I don't necessarily like these sort of squares here at this point. I'd rather have it back to maybe empty circle. So I can rerun just this plot and get a new plot with those new parameters. Real quickly, only had to change one tiny little thing, and I can redo the analysis. This is also important if you're trying to reproduce analysis or you're trying to share what you did with someone else because you can actually email these script files, save these script files, post them along with the data set, whatever it needs to be, such that someone else can see exactly every single thing that you actually did. 